Hello, my name is Haley Stoker and I'm with Centerstone's Prevention Service Department. This is the contraception lesson in our Teen Pregnancy Prevention Toolkit. In order to talk about contraception, we first need to understand some facts about teen pregnancy. In 2014, a total of 249,078 babies were born to young women ages 15 to 19 in the United States. In Tennessee alone, there were 6,756 infants born to young women ages 15 to 19 in the year 2014. In 2010, Tennessee spent 230 million tax dollars on teen childbearing. Pregnancy and teen birth are significant contributors to high school dropout rates among young women. Only about 50% of teen mothers receive a high school diploma before the age of 22, whereas approximately 90% of young women who do not give birth during adolescence obtain their high school diploma. Only 61% of working teen dads obtain a high school diploma by the age of 26, compared to the 97% of young men who are not teen parents. In order for a pregnancy to happen, a sperm cell must fertilize an egg. This is most commonly going to occur through sexual intercourse. Once a sperm has been released into the vagina, they will travel through the cervix into the uterus and eventually to the fallopian tube where an individual sperm can fertilize an egg. Once the egg is fertilized, the egg will travel into the uterus and embed itself into the uterine lining. Our position on birth control. Not assuming that anyone is sexually active, but most people will transition out of abstinence at some point in their lives. It's important to know how to protect yourself in the event that you become sexually active. Having the knowledge prepares you to make healthy decisions in the future. And when becoming sexually active, you need to make informed decisions on how to reduce the risk for pregnancy and STDs, including HIV. So what is contraception? It's any method used to reduce the risk of a pregnancy. There are many different forms of contraception. This includes condoms, both internal and external, the pill, the patch, the ring, IUDs, which stand for inner uterine devices, the shot, the implant, diaphragms, sponges, spermicides, and abstinence. Abstinence meaning when a person chooses to not engage in sexual activity. Forms of contraception include over-the-counter methods. These do not require a provider, an appointment, or a prescription. They can be found in drugstores, convenience stores, health departments, and clinics. These include external condoms, internal condoms, spermicides, and the contraceptive sponge. Some forms of contraception are prescribed methods. This means that a person must visit a doctor and or a prescription is necessary. Most work by regulating hormones. They reduce the risk of pregnancy, but do not reduce the risk of STDs and HIV. These include diaphragms, birth control pills, the patch, the ring, IUDs, the shot, better known as Depo-Provera, and the implant, better known as Nexplanon. Free methods. These methods do not require a provider appointment or prescription, and they cost nothing. This includes abstinence, which is not engaging in sexual activity. When used correctly, contraceptive methods can reduce the risk of pregnancy. However, reducing the risk of something is different from avoiding the risk altogether. Abstinence is the only 100% effective method for preventing pregnancy and STD transmission. Let's talk first about over-the-counter methods. The external condom. This is a latex or polyurethane sheath that covers the penis. 
It is put on the penis as soon as the penis is erect and is removed after ejaculation away from the person's sexual partner. With perfect use, condoms are 98% effective. With typical use, condoms are 82% effective. When used consistently and correctly, condoms can reduce a person's risk for STDs, including HIV. No prescription or provider appointment is necessary to obtain condoms. The internal condom. This is a soft, loose-fitting polyurethane or nitrate sheath that lines the vagina. This is inserted right before sex or even up to eight hours ahead of time. With perfect use, the internal condom is 95% effective. With typical use, it's 79% effective. It requires commitment and must be used consistently and correctly every time to be effective. Spermicide. This includes creams, films, foams, gels, and suppositories that contain chemicals that stop sperm from moving. These are inserted into the vagina, so it keeps sperm from getting through the cervix and into the uterus. These are different for each product. Many require a 10-minute wait between the application and sexual contact. With perfect use, spermicides are 82% effective, and with typical use, 72% effective. Spermicide is most effective when used with another method, such as a condom. This does not protect against STDs, including HIV. Using a condom consistently and correctly will help reduce the risk of STDs. No prescription or provider appointment is necessary to obtain spermicide. Chemicals in spermicide can raise a person's risk for HIV infection and may cause irritation to skin as well as can be messy. Spermicide is easy to find, easy to use, does not affect a person's hormone, and can be used while breastfeeding. The contraceptive sponge is a round piece of white plastic foam with a little dimple on one side and a nylon strap across the top. This is inserted into the vagina before vaginal intercourse. It blocks the cervix and releases spermicide. Once inserted, it can be left in for up to 30 hours. It must be left in at least six hours after vaginal intercourse. With perfect use, the contraceptive sponge is 80 to 91% effective. With typical use, it's 76 to 88% effective. The contraceptive sponge is not effective in the spread of STDs, including HIV. Inserting the sponge can be difficult or uncomfortable. It may cause irritation. It's unpredictable in its effectiveness, and it requires discipline and planning. The contraceptive sponge will not affect hormones. No prescription is necessary. It can be inserted 24 hours in advance and may be used while breastfeeding. Let's move on to prescribed methods. The diaphragm is a shallow dome-shaped cup made of silicone. It is inserted in the vagina to cover up the cervix. It may be used with spermicide to increase effectiveness. The diaphragm must be left in for at least six hours after vaginal intercourse. With perfect use, the diaphragm is 94% effective. With typical use, the diaphragm is 88% effective. It is not effective against the spread of STDs, including HIV. A provider visit and prescription are necessary in order to obtain a diaphragm. Sometimes a fitting will be necessary. The diaphragm can be difficult to insert, requires planning, can be pushed out of place, and may cause irritation or urinary tract infection. The diaphragm will not affect hormones, can be inserted before needed, has multiple uses, decreases the risk of pelvic inflammatory disease, and can be used while breastfeeding. Birth control pills are a pill taken at the same time every day that releases a hormone. Hormones prevent ovulation, which is when an egg is released from the ovary, and thicken cervical mucus to help keep sperm out of the uterus and prevent them from fertilizing an egg. Birth control pills are taken at the same time every day to ensure consistency 
in hormones. Several days after discontinuing use, fertility will return. When used perfectly, birth control pills are 99% effective. With typical use, birth control pills are 91% effective. Birth control pills are not effective against the spread of STDs, including HIV. Birth control pills require a discipline to remember, possible early side effects, which can include occasional spotting, sore breasts, nausea. Birth control pills give a person control over the timing of their periods, can be easy to use, may reduce acne, and may reduce menstrual cramping. The patch is a small, thin sticker that resembles a Band-Aid and contains hormones. The hormones are absorbed through the skin, which prevents ovulation and thickens cervical mucus. It is changed at the same time each week for three weeks and is removed for the fourth week during someone's period. With perfect use, the patch is 99% effective. With typical use, the patch is 91% effective. It is not effective against the spread of STDs, including HIV. The patch may not be worn for individuals over a certain weight and can cause possible bleeding in between periods, breast tenderness, and nausea. The patch is easy to use and requires relatively little effort. It can cause more regular periods, may clear up acne, and can help reduce menstrual cramping. The ring is a small, flexible ring inserted into the vagina that contains hormones. Hormones are absorbed directly through the cervix to prevent ovulation and thicken cervical mucus. The ring is inserted and worn for three weeks and removed on the fourth week for someone's period. It can also be worn continuously. With perfect use, the ring is 99% effective. With typical use, the ring is 91% effective. It is not effective against the transmission of STDs, including HIV. It can cause possible spotting and breast tenderness, as well as nausea. It can also cause possible increased vaginal discharge, irritation, or infection in the long term. It may clear up acne and can reduce menstrual cramping. It is also a lower dose of hormones than many other hormonal methods. IUDs, or intrauterine devices, are small pieces of plastic and or metal that are inserted into the uterus by a doctor. There are two types of IUDs in the United States. Hormonal IUDs, which are made of plastic and release progestin, Non-hormonal IUDs, which contain small amounts of safe, natural copper. Both affect sperm's ability to move in the uterus to keep them from fertilizing an egg. Once inserted, hormonal IUDs can be effective for three to six years, depending on the brand. Non-hormonal IUDs can be effective for up to 12 years. With perfect use, IUDs are greater than 99% effective. Once an IUD is inserted, there's nothing else a person has to do in order for it to remain effective. It is not effective against the spread of STDs, including HIV. Possible side effects include spotting between periods, cramping, and backaches. Non-hormonal IUD users could have increased menstrual flow. Benefits include long-term protection with little effort, it's easy to conceal. Hormonal IUDs can make periods lighter. Non-hormonal IUDs do not affect hormones and can be used while breastfeeding. The birth control shot, also known as Depo-Provera, is a shot containing progestin that is given every three months. Progestin works to prevent ovulation and thicken cervical mucus to keep sperm from fertilizing an egg. A person must receive their shot every three months in order for Depo-Provera to be effective. With perfect use, Depo-Provera is greater than 99% effective. With typical use, the shot is 94% effective. It is not effective against the spread or transmission of STDs, including HIV. It is possible for a person to experience irregular bleeding, especially for the first 6 to 12 months after receiving the shot.
It can also create a change in appetite or weight gain. Less common side effects include hair loss, dizziness, headache, and nausea. The shot is easy to conceal, may cause shorter or lighter periods or no period at all, and has long-term protection with little effort. It can also be used while breastfeeding. The implant, also known as Nexplanon, is a thin stick about the size of a match that is inserted under the skin of the upper arm by a doctor. The implant releases progestin, which prevents ovulation and thickens cervical mucus to keep sperm from fertilizing an egg. Once inserted, the implant is effective for up to three years. With perfect use, the implant has a greater than 99% effectiveness. With typical use, the implant has a greater than 99% effectiveness. Once the implant is inserted, it is there and working, meaning a person does not have to do anything else in order to use the implant. It is not effective against the spread of STDs, including HIV. The implant can cause possible irregular bleeding, especially in the first 6 to 12 months after insertion. Less common side effects include acne, headaches, discoloration or scarring of the skin over the implant site, and pain at the implant site. The implant offers long-term protection with very little effort. It is easy to conceal. It can cause fewer or lighter periods and can be used through breastfeeding. Let's move on to free methods. Free methods includes abstinence, which is not engaging in oral, anal, or vaginal sex. If sperm does not come in contact with the vagina, there is not a risk for pregnancy. As long as someone is abstinent, they are 100% protected from the risk of pregnancy. It's also the 100% effective way to avoid STDs, including HIV. It can be difficult to maintain. Things like peer or partner pressure can make abstinence difficult for some people. However, there are no side effects and it's completely free. If you are trying to decide which method is best for you, you should talk to your parents, your doctor, a counselor, or another trusted adult. If we're trying to make sure that both partners are involved in contraceptive use, go to the doctor or clinic with your partner. Wear latex or polyurethane condoms. Ask questions. Help remind your partner to take the pill or make appointments. And be supportive. Remember, to reduce the risk of unwanted pregnancy and sexually transmitted disease, you have to use effective methods that lower your risk. A condom is the only birth control method that reduces the risk of spreading and contracting sexually transmitted diseases, including HIV. Abstinence, or not having sex, is the 100% effective method against spread of STDs and unplanned pregnancy. This concludes the contraception lesson for our toolkit.